Hi, I'm Norman Gilmore, and I'm going to give you a quick tour of some open source annotation software packages, and then a few resources that I found helpful in getting an overview of the field. The first one we're going to look at is Gate. You'll find Gate at gate.ac.uk, and you'll see that they have good onboarding experience with uh, books, user guide, training courses, and materials. This is a comprehensive desktop package. It's actually quite easy to download and run. You just need to have Java installed. And when you run it, you get an application window that looks like this. I've actually loaded a sample package already. So you'll see that it lets you set up a pipeline. So we have this application, Annie. Uh, it lets you load in language re resources. So this is, I believe, where your corpora are going to be. And then there are processing resources. So these are, for example, this parts of speech tagger, um, and they would be applied in a pipeline. So gate can apply things that are in a pipeline. If we take a look at this, they have an API, and they have all kinds of plugins that transform and annotate your text in various ways. So it's a, it's a comprehensive package. It is a desktop package, so it isn't accessible to collaborators via a web server. It does have, I'll show you the menus. I don't know what that menu does. Annotation schema, corpus, gate documents. Looks like this is where we can insert our tools or configure our individual tools. We can work on our pipeline with this menu, manage data stores here. These are the plugin menu I showed you a second ago. And it has a tool called an annotation diff tool, which I'd like to come back and look at. Uh, it looks like it can compare documents that have different sets of annotations so that you can compare the differences in those annotations. Very interesting. And so you can see the gate documentation is here and it's pretty detailed and well organized. So that makes it an especially useful resource when we see excellent documentation like this. The next piece of software we're going to look at is May 2. This was originally by Amber Stubbs at Brandeis University and was picked up by Kay Rim, also of Brandeis University, and extended. May is also a desktop Java application. May 2 is the simplest of the annotation programs that we're looking at today. It focuses on letting you annotate a document given a specified DTD. And then if you have that document annotated by several people, it allows you to then adjudicate that document to create a gold standard from the source annotations that you have. It also calculates inter-annotator agreement scores of various types. And so I'm looking forward to trying this out and creating a separate screencast for that shortly. You can find May 2 here on GitHub and it has some documentation. It was easy to download and run using Java. And so you can check it out here. Oh, and I should add that in the Natural Language Annotation for Machine Learning book by James Pustyovsky and Amber Stubbs, that at the end, um, there is a user guide for the original version of May. And that may be helpful as well as a resource. So check that out as well. The next tool is BRAT. Brandeis annotation tool. And this is the first of a series of web-based tools. So the first two, Gate and May 2, were desktop Java applications. The rest of the applications that we're looking at will be running in a web browser. So this is an example of Brat running in a browser. It has up at the top a menu, uh, which lets you access various functions, such as the particular document collection you're working with. You can adjust the format of the data that the data that you're seeing so the annotated version the text only version and uh, other useful tools so the search tool also searching for entities events so you can search at the annotation layers as well as the source text so this is a very nice compact interface you can see that this is doing annotation when i hover over a uh, word that has been labeled segmented and then we can also see that this is capable of doing linked annotations where different segments that have been labeled are now able to link into a 
or rather able to create a link tag that relates several items in the text to each other. So note also that um, each sentence is on its own line, so it's been segmented that way, and that we have these arrows that are showing the connections between the uh, segmented annotations, the first layer annotations. And when if I had a login for this website, I would actually be able to double click on these and edit them and make changes to them, but I don't have a login for this particular site. So it is, however, open source. I can download it and run it. They have here in the manual a uh, nice set of screenshots, so it's easy to go through and get a feel for how this application works. I also want to point out, almost just for myself, that they do include some documentation of their standoff format, and that could be interesting as well. Almost forgot, they have a nice list of their features. So they advertise their comprehensive visualization, intuitive editing, integration with external resources, and zero setup. Once it's a web server, it, once the web server is installed, your annotators don't have to install any software. And they annotate in any language. They have integrated annotation comparison, also something of interest. So for creating a gold standard uh, corpora, um, we're looking into that. So it also has an address for each annotation. So they're able to identify fragments so, so that you can point another researcher to a particular fragment within your corpus. So that's nice. And integration with automatic annotation tools. And then they say high quality visualization at any scale and talk about their use of SVG. So actually, that was another thing I meant to point out. If we take a look at this and we right click and open up our debugger, we see, in fact, that this is all constructed with SVG. And I'm going to drag it to the side a little bit and go down and hover. You can see the individual elements are using transform and translation operations in order to move the text and position it within the space where it's being annotated. So it also obviously has some event management for handling the hovers. So this is all SVG, so it's, that's an interesting technical approach. The other thing I want to mention about that, we'll come back to later, is notice this icon. There's another tool we're going to look at later that uses the same favicon and also uses SVG, and I suspect they're using the same underlying library. I don't know yet. Uh, who is uh, borrowed whose library, um, but I'd like to figure that out. Anyway, there are more features listed here, so uh, come to brat.nlplab.org slash features.html and check them out. The next tool we're going to look at is WebAnno, brought to us by Technische Universität Darmstadt, I believe. So boom, annotation. I uh, remember that favicon I mentioned a second ago. Well, I notice here that WebAnno has the same favicon, and they also seem to have the same sentence-based annotation layout strategy. When I inspect the page source for this, I see that this is also SVG. So I think maybe they're using the same library as the BRAT team. Anyway, uh, you can see this is capable of doing very robust multi-layer annotation with segmentation and links. And up at the top, we see our tools for corpus management and uh, going through pages. The guidelines for a particular project would be here. And this also is capable of managing um, external plugin tools, automated annotators, and I believe it probably has an API for that. So this is also a robust application, by the way. Uh, this was easy to download. It's a, another Java application, and they have a version that runs standalone, so you don't have to hassle with configuring databases. You'll see I'm running this on localhost um, 8080, so this is on my own machine. And they do put a little warning banner at the bottom. Use this for testing only. We don't recommend this for production use. But it is really nice um, out-of-box experience for being able to download it and play with it uh, a live copy. Anyway, this is a very robust tool. They have here uh, at webanno.github.io, they have a, a pretty comprehensive user guide. So I recommend checking that out. And we can maybe slowly scroll through the table of contents here. I guess that's not that slow. Sorry. You can come here and check it out. And they also have 
a nice playlist here on YouTube at the by the web anno team this playlist has a tutorial and introduction about annotation and curation correction and automation setup and monitoring and so here I'll this is our team that brings you web anno and they uh, then I'm Said I'm Richard I'm Chris I'm Lavina and they are the web anno team and they do this uh, take you through an orientation to web anno so I direct you there for further information the next tool is Anis. I only found this yesterday, so I know very little about it, but it seems to focus on visualizing annotated text corpora, a web browser-based search and visualization architecture for complex multi-layer linguistic corpora with diverse types of annotation. So uh, as you can see, it looks like it has some sophisticated interfaces and visualizations. Here in the homepage of corpus-tools.org slash Anis, we have a list of some public installations. And I opened up the first one, and I'll show you that tab in a minute. But I just want to keep scrolling down this home page to give you a feel for what some of their UI looks like. So if we go to this public installation, we can see it's a pretty sophisticated um, user experience here. And at the top, though, I want to draw your attention to this link that says Tutorial. And so I'm going to go through the tutorial later, and it looks like a good place to start. Some other resources, let's go through my tabs. Uh, it has an Anis query language. So there is also a CQL elsewhere on the other Corpus tools use the Corpus query language. I don't know if uh, AQL is completely independent of that or a derivative of that. Haven't taken a look yet, but that looks pretty interesting. Here's a page on the various types of visualizations that Anis provides for looking at annotated corpora. This looks pretty interesting. I'd love to play with this some more. It's on GitHub, corpling slash Anis. This is where you can find it. And it looks like it has a 44-page uh, uh, set of documentation. I guess I'll stop scrolling and let you look at the contents for a split second. And uh, also web browser-based documentation at corpling.github.io. Uh, you can go there and check that. And then here's a conference paper from July 2009. So it looks like it's been around a little while. It's looking like a fairly mature tool. So that is Anis. So not so much annotation, but it looks like it's a great tool for looking at annotated corpora and visualizing what you've got. The next tool is Slate. This is a tool for creating and maintaining annotated corpora, as you can see from the documentation here. There's also an interesting article by some of the same authors or the same lead author uh, called Annotation Process Management Revisited. And one of the other uh, things that I found of interest related to Slate is a Vimeo showing their tool in action. I'll hit play. So as the person is highlighting, you'll see on the right side they have their topics or their segmentation categories or links that they can apply. And I just wanted to point out they have listed in this column the shortcut key, which is a nice little feature. And also that to the lower right, they appear to be listing the annotations as they're made so that they can be examined independently of the annotations uh, actual highlight in what might be a long document on the left side. This is where you can find the Slate software. It's on bitbucket.org slash Dane Kaplan, D-A-I-N Kaplan, and you can see that there's also a manual here that has screenshots that can give you an idea of what the software looks like. The last download, however, I will point out, uh, was updated in 2012, so right now it's about five years old, but could still be interesting in terms of the ideas in it and the software uh, process that it embodies that they talk about in the article over here on Slate. So I want to just share with you briefly some books and articles which I found very interesting and useful in getting oriented to this space. So the book by James Pustyovsky and Amber Stubbs, Natural Language Annotation for Machine Learning. You can see the table of contents here. And we have the May User Guide, as I mentioned earlier, but they also have a list of available corpora and specifications in the appendix and a list of software resources 
This is getting a little older, but you'll see some of the ones that we covered in this video today, such as gate. The next article, Overview of Annotation Creation, Processes and Tools, is very helpful recent survey of the types of features that are put in annotation tools. Uh, I got this particular chapter from ResearchGate. I say chapter because it's listed as being a chapter in the upcoming Handbook of Linguistic Annotation. And this, this article, it's 19 pages long, does a great job of surveying features that have been included in corpus management and annotation tools, discussing which tools have which sets of features, and it's a really great uh, uh, sort of overall multi-tool comparison and survey, and I uh, recommend it highly. And finally, in case you are able to find this at your library, the Handbook of Linguistic Annotation is available from Springer. Um, I won't be purchasing a copy at uh, $399, but uh, some of the chapters are available. As we can see, the one I just uh, showed you, the overview of annotation creation processes and tools is a chapter in this book and uh, was available from another source. So in any event, this is the set of chapters in the Handbook of Annotation, and that may also be a useful resource if your library has purchased it. This chapter in particular looks interesting, uh, Collaborative Web-Based Tools for Multi-Layer Text Annotation, and it says that they discuss the requirements for web-based annotation tools in detail and review tools in respect to these requirements. So they then go on to discuss two web-based multi-layer annotation tools, Gate, Teamware, and WebAnno. We looked at WebAnno, and we looked at the desktop version of Gate, but Gate does have uh, some sort of tool called Gate Teamware, which is web-based, and um, that's probably worth some further investigation and checking out. And that's my quick overview of open source annotation tools and some resources you might find useful in evaluating them.